Welcome back to Not Another Mummy podcast with me, Alison Perry. Happy New Year, everyone. If you are in the mood to start 2022 with an organised, fresh approach, then this episode is for you. I'm joined today by Nicola Lewis, founder of This Girl Can Organise. Nicola can be found offering hints, tips and practical real life solutions on keeping organised on social media, as well as providing a home decluttering and organising service to people all over the UK. I chat to Nicola to get all of her New Year organisation tips from fridges to wardrobes to that Monica cupboard or room that you might use as a dumping ground. I know I've got one of those. So whether you're on a brisk January walk or cosied up with a cuppa, get ready to be inspired to declutter and get organised. Nicola, a massive welcome to the podcast. It is so fab having you join me today. How are you doing and what has your start to 2022 been like so far? Thank you so much for having me. Wow, we're in 2022. (laughs) Um, I have to say I'm starting off very... Very positive as always. Um, nothing much really changes for me, I think. I love obviously New Year and I know for so many it's a fresh start. But for me, it's just like the same mentality. I just go about my day. I go about my weeks with the same habits, um, the same, you know, pre- I, I know, it sounds very official calling it procedures, doesn't it? But I guess it kind of has sort of worked that way. And I'm very focused, you know, I'm very driven. I set my goals in January. Um, and I just look forward to the year ahead, basically. It is so nice though, isn't it, to start afresh after Christmas. And you're a Christmas baby just like me. So happy belated birthday. Oh, when was your birthday? We had this conversation, Nicola, a couple of weeks ago. I can't believe you don't remember. Oh, you're the 27th. I'm the 25th. I'm Christmas Day. Oh, of course you are. Do you know what? I've met so many Capricorns in December and I just was like, oh my gosh, I couldn't believe because a lot of my network are Capricorns and I love that. Um, but yeah, how was your birthday? Oh, brilliant. Do you know what? I always feel a little bit like, oh, I'm, I'm really kind of torn over whether I love or hate having a Christmas Day birthday because I love it because it basically means that my husband has to do the Christmas dinner and I get to sit around <laughs> drinking Prosecco and playing with the kids. And it is brilliant. That's amazing. But then equally, but then equally, I do feel a bit like, you know, the kind of like that petulant child comes out and I feel like I just want one day that's all about me and it isn't about everybody else as well, which is just obviously <laughs> ridiculous. I mean, I get a little bit like that on Christmas Eve, but I think I used to be a little bit more like that when the girls were small because we used to just do birthday in the morning and then from the afternoon of Christmas Eve, it was Christmas Eve, basically. And yeah, I used to think, oh, you know, and also it's rubbish really for meeting up with friends and because, you know, people are either, you know, just no money or they've got no time and you just want to party or want to see your friends. So I tend to try and sort of do something in January and I feel like it's a bit more fun it's something to look forward to so yeah that's probably what I'm looking forward to this month yeah it's funny though I actually feel sorry for people who've got January birthdays because I know I've got quite a few friends who've got January birthdays and they always say you know no one's up for going out everyone's skin everyone's you know done their partying and they're knackered and they want to just curl up you know watching Netflix of an evening um, so that's so interesting that you actually postpone your your birthday celebrations to this month. Well, I think for for some, you know, January is a difficult month. I mean, gosh, it really is. And it doesn't help the, with the weather either. So I always try to fill my month up with nice things because I feel like December were, well, is kind of like one of those crazy months where we're running around shopping, socialising, putting sequins on. Well, I wear sequins all year round. I love it. (laughs) So why not extend that into January? And I'm telling you now, it makes such a difference. It makes a massive difference to my mood. Um, 
and I just feel happier and I have things to look forward to and I just space it out because I can't afford to go out all the time in December. I just simply can't. And it just seems it's just so intense. So yeah, it's a nice way to just sort of go into the new year with great intentions. Yes. Okay. So we're going to start, we're going to, we're going to start a campaign to um, make sequins the official uh, outfit <laughs> of uh, for January. Um, no longer will it be associated with Christmas. It's going to be the, the January, the January uniform. I love you. Um, but, I love you. Yeah. So getting organized, you know, I am, I love getting a diary and, you know, really thinking, you know, about the year ahead and getting organized. But have you always been an organised person? Like, cause you, didn't you work in investment banking previously? And that must have involved being organised, I'm guessing. Yeah, so I, I guess I really have. I've always loved, you know, getting that new... Do you remember Filofax? Yes. Well, I know they're still out now, Love but that. I remember getting my Filofax and just writing everything in and filling them out and getting extra kind of attachments inside. And, oh, loved it. Um, I grew up in a very organized household with my mum and dad. Um, both of them at work full time. And I remember everything being like now as an adult, I look back and I think, gosh, everything was kind of, um, regimented in a way, but I feel blessed to have had that sort of childhood that I feel that as an adult, I've been allowed to I've had the kind of the foundation learning of keeping my room tidy, making my bed, that when I went to work and working in investment banking, particularly in trading floors where they're so stressful, that I was super organised. But I also, you know, was raring to learn. I was ambitious. I I just felt very like I, I could thrive because I had all the tools to stay organized but even my home was calm and clarity because there was nothing kind of to distract me there no okay i'm going to be straight with you i basically want all of your getting organized tips for the new year um you're really big on creating vision boards aren't you and setting mm. goals for the year ahead mm. how should we go about doing that ourselves so the good way to start off with that and I this is something I love doing is just getting yourself either a pin board um you could either you know get an old frame maybe and just write post-its and put that inside the frame somewhere you can see it um I tend to put my vision board in I've got like a, a spare room it's kind of not a Monica cupboard and it's not a Monica room but it's a, a bit of a nothing room at the moment and that is where everything gets put is it is it put there in, in an organized way though or is it all just shoved in in a Monica fashion no it is in a, it's all in sections which makes it seem sense to me because you know whether it's items for work, items which is like social media stuff, um, things, overspill of clothes that I'm trying to sell that are all on a clothes rail. There's an eBay box, stuff for eBay. You know, there's all these things. And until I get the structure built, which is something, you know, we're looking into, but these things don't, are not cheap. They're just, yeah, a bit of a saving up mission there. Um, that That's kind of what I do. And so, yeah, going back to the um, vision board, I love displaying mine on the wall and I go into that room and I see it and I think, especially if I'm having days where I think, crumbs, it's been a really, really full on day or you lose your mojo a bit or, you know, you've just lost a bit of direction for whatever reason, something's thrown at you. And I look on there and I think, no, this is what? I'm doing it for. And on there are all kind of very personal goals for me. It's not necessarily about money. It's not about cars or houses and things like that. It's about why am I doing this? Why, what is, you know, the, the main goals for my business? Um, what do I want to achieve? And this is something I've learned and practiced through my job in investment banking. I did goal setting for like 15 years. Um, so it just made sense to carry that on with my own business. And yes, I, I feel like it has a really imp 
powerful impact on you by just sitting down and just writing up some goals for the year or even for the month. I think with like New Year's resolutions, there seems to be in a bit of a backlash um, of recent years. It feels like a lot of people are kind of quite anti New Year's resolution. Um, I mean, to me, it feels like quite a good opportunity just to kind of reflect on, you know, stuff that's happened in the previous year and think about what you might want to achieve. It's not necessarily about putting pressure on yourself or, um, you know, I think I, th- I think some people think, well, there's no point because you're just going to say, well, I'm, you know, going to eat a certain way or I'm going to exercise a certain way or, I, you know, all of those things. And by the 31st of January, we'll have forgotten about it all. And actually, set, doing a bit of goal setting can be can be quite helpful, really. Absolutely. Do you know what I think it is? I think the word New Year resolution is is the thing. I think that's what puts people off. I think they just think, oh, I hate that word. I mean, New Year has, not everyone's a massive fan of New Year. I'm not a massive fan of New Year's Eve celebrations. I'm quite happy sitting at home with the Chinese and a bottle of fizz and going to bed at 10 o'clock. I've never really been a massive fan of it. (laughs) But for some others, it is a big deal. And I think, you know, it's maybe some people need the motivation from a New Year's resolution um, and others just see that they're doing their best. I'm just doing my best each day. And I think if we've learned anything over the last 18 months is to take things day by day and do our best. And if, you know, we didn't achieve that one thing, that one task that, that particular day, then it can be carried over the next. And, you know, life's too short to not eat cake in my estimation. So it's all about balance and doing the things that make you happy. That is so important. Definitely. I am so with you. Life is too short to not eat cake. I mean, let's just get t-shirts with that written on it. Um, now, it's really funny because you mentioned earlier that your Monica, your Monica room, um, even though it isn't really a Monica room. Um, but, you know, I, one thing I was going to mention to you was that I think that you would faint if you saw my office at home because it's got piles of books that won't fit into any bookcase. It's got boxes of my husband's old teaching work. It's got clothes that are waiting to be donated to charity, notebooks, a hoover, a fan. It's basically a dumping ground. But hearing you talking about your room made me think, oh, goodness, maybe it's OK to have a room that is essentially an overspill mm. dumping ground. But mm. maybe maybe I can organise it. Maybe I can make it into sections, you know, an acceptable room rather than this kind of like shameful secret. Well, I do show it on social media every now and then because I do want to. Obviously, my Instagram page is very much about being real. So, and just to just to say that I nothing overwhelms me, you know. And I, it's quite interesting because people go, "Oh my gosh, do I tidy up before you come to help me?" Um, do I tidy up? Oh, TGCO is coming around. Let's stuff everything in the cupboards. I actually couldn't care what you put in your cupboards. The only moment I care is when you say to me, what can I do with this space? What can I do with this cupboard? And then, you know, bing, you know, I start, I come, come alive and I, I go to work. Other than that, I don't judge. You know, I, I know that life's busy and I know that life is overwhelming and not everyone loves to organize. Um, And that's pretty much why I set up my business is to go and help individuals that, you know, don't have the time or do find it overwhelming that I can help them. So I think that is a really important thing there, that if you do have a Monica cupboard or if you do have a Monica space or a spare room that just is a dumping ground, then make sense of that dumping ground that, you know, they're the stuff, they're kind of like in progress. It's not like They've potentially not got a home, but you don't know what you're doing with them. And they're buffering, basically, (laughs) because they just they're waiting to go either to a home or potentially in storage or being donated. Do you think that most people's problem is that they haven't got enough storage or do you think that we are just rubbish at you know, um, thinning, you know, thinning down stuff and decluttering. I mean, my my sideboard in my dining room is currently covered in vases that don't fit into the the sideboard. And I'm looking at it thinking, I just can't work out whether I need more storage or whether I just need to get rid of some vases. What do you think? Okay, so I've got quite an interesting um, answer to this because I do tend to think that 
as a society, we have been encouraged heavily to uh, consume. So I think the emphasis on consuming and how it makes us feel and that it's good for us to go and consume, yet when we come home, we've had that shopping experience, we're happy, yet when we go to display it in our home, it's not quite the same. So we lose that appeal of that particular item. And it's quite interesting. It's particularly when I've worked with clients that have spent, you know, hundreds and hundreds of pounds on makeup, which let's face it, makeup isn't cheap anyway, only to stuff it in a drawer. And then it's devalued and they've got no real respect for it. And then it becomes overwhelming. And then they go, oh, I don't need that anyway. Whereas I feel like everything that comes into my home, I either want to display it. I can't wait to put it in its new home and use it and wouldn't it be lovely my kind of my sort of sense and view on things is as you go into a shop you love that whole kind of experience wouldn't it be lovely to have that same sort of experience in your home whether that's on a sideboard whether that's in your wardrobe that you open that wardrobe up and you go it's exactly like how I would buy it in Zara you know and I feel it's really important that You should have those happy moments. You should have those sort of, I call them sparkly moments in your home where you, you know, you quickly look over and instead of displaying, I guess, uh, or styling, you know, a media unit, style inside the cupboards because they're the things that you need to utilize and use, but you're storing them because maybe they're not as attractive to be out, but they're practical. You need still to have a solution inside those cupboards to make you use them and feel, yeah, it's not a waste of money. Yeah. I mean, this really is a good time of a year to have a wardrobe clear out. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, the thing I always struggle with is what if I throw away something? I mean, my I, I'm quite, probably quite similar to a lot of women um, and men, let's face it, where I've got, you know, I've got clothes in my wardrobe that are a size 12 right up to a size 18. And I'm really reluctant to chuck away some of the like 12s and the 14s because I'm like, well, that might, uh, that might, you know, I, I might fit into that one day or um, something that I might, uh, perhaps does still fit, but I haven't worn in ages. I just really hate that feeling of regretting throwing something away because I later want to wear it. Yeah. And this is very common with a lot of my clients. So Alison, I'm definitely going to come over and help you this year um, because I want you <laughs> to open your wardrobe and be wowed by all the things that you're going to want to wear. Okay. Now you can have items in your wardrobe that make you happy, but if they don't fit, then it's going to have another I don't know. It it, it just won't have a great effect on your mood. Um, It it might make you happy and it might bring you wonderful memories. But if you want to get into it and you're constantly seeing it and you know you can't, then that's no good. So what I do is I kind of remove some of those items um, and I store them in my loft. So I've got like a bag of clothes that are beautiful. They're all wonderful memories. I won't ever get rid of them. I don't fit in them. Um, but I've protected them and I've been quite strict actually. There's only about, I think there's about 10 dresses. Um, I don't know. Am I keeping them because I think my girls might like to wear them? Maybe not because they've got their own unique style, but these hold just like items, just like a vase. They hold wonderful memories and I do want to keep them and be able to know where they are, but I don't want them confusing me inside my wardrobe. So that is a, that's a a really good alternative and and a solution if you've got too many items in your wardrobe that don't fit you. Another idea is also to actually look at these items and go, being realistic, do I love them that much? Is it time for me to let this go and let someone else enjoy them? Um, if that's a good sort of solution for yourself, then then obviously that can then go and that's quite easy. That can go straight into a bag for donations or to sell if you've got the time. But yeah, Alison, it's a really tough one. Clothes, yeah, clothes are really hard because also we also wonder about we've spent the money on a particular item. It's cost us X, Y, Z. I've only worn it once, so I'll be damned if I'm letting that go. But you have to then think, I let the money go when I bought the item. I'm not going to get that back unless I'm going to invest time 
So that you've got to question that as well. You know, how, how much is the time spent selling something? Is it worth it that I'm going to get X, Y, Z back from that particular item? Or is it best to just pass it on? I'll tell you what I'm a big fan of is, um, um, rather than the faff of reselling something, I'm a really big fan of like those sort of local groups that you get on like Facebook and yes. you know, different sites where you can pass stuff on for, you know, free for free. Um, I, you know, I've given bundles of all my, my girls clothing away and like just random things like vases and things around the house and seeing them go to a good home is, is just brilliant. And yeah. I've got things from, from, from those sites as well. I've got like a little Ikea bookcase that I needed for, for my girls um to display their books and to get it free rather than paying 20 quid from Ikea, I was like, mm. this is brilliant. This is like, this just made me feel so good. So I, donations is a big part of my, um yeah I guess a big part of of my life really because I grew up with my nan who always was helping out in her community and was very much a make do and mend uh mentality as well and I that's why I wrote a chat big chapter in my book Mind Over Clutter about donations because there are so many options out there where you can make a difference so as I mentioned earlier about if you've got clothes that you're just not in, inspired to wear no more, or just don't feel nice in, then bag them up. Go on places like Free Cycle, which is amazing. Facebook Marketplace, as you've just mentioned. But also there's places like Vinted and Depop um, that are brilliant and very easy to just upload your clothes. But then also you can make a difference to, you know, local women's aid shelters you know, I think it just takes a phone call, looking on Google, make a phone call and taking a bag down and knowing that that's going to make a difference to someone who comes in in a crisis, you know, whether it's kids clothes, women's clothes. I donated quite a lot of my old suits um, when I stopped working because I didn't want them in my wardrobe. I kept two. That's such a good idea. Yeah, I kept two because these two, it's not because of the money, but I actually felt fantastic and I had some great meetings and experiences and times in those suits and they're upstairs. I don't want to see them all the time, but I know that they're up in, in, our, in the loft with the other dresses and that's fine. But the others were all beautiful. And I thought this can go to women's aid. And the lady I spoke to was lovely. She said, you know what? A lot of our women need suits because they go out looking for jobs. So um, thank you so much. So it made me feel good as well. So it's a it's a nice way of, you know, caring and sharing, really. No, it's brilliant. Giving giving a bit of back. That's brilliant. That's so good. Now let's talk about let's talk about uh, fridge edits because you know we've had the last few weeks. I don't know. You know, I'm guessing your house is a bit like mine in that we've had a fridge full and you know we've been trying to you know get through all the leftovers, but inevitably we don't quite you know, make it through and stuff ends up kind of like sitting in Tupperware boxes and wrapped in tin foil. Um, mm. So tell me about the fridge edits, because this is probably something that we all need to do now, but also regularly. Can I just say I love leftovers. Me too. It's probably one of my favourite foods in the fridge. I love opening the fridge just to stare at it at Christmas time because <laughs> I think, oh, what's in there? A bit of cheese bit of something random, a bit of pickle and a bit of pate or whatever. And it, you have it for breakfast. It's so funny. <laughs> um, so f- for me, I think, I mean, I have a system in place in the fridge. Of course I do. Um, something that I implemented last year on social media, and I know it rocked a lot of people's world, was um, the use it up box. Now, the use it up box was something I'd just come up with because – I was sick of literally the kids opening things up and then it get lost in the fridge. Or you're looking for, let's say, for example, hummus, right? And you found it and it expired two days ago. So for me, having a box inside the fridge, by the way, I'm surprised no big kind of like refrigerating brands have contacted me yet um to to, to implement you this to as part them, of the fridge to them nicola i know <laughs> it's such a good idea but um i just have a clear black plastic box inside my fridge and it has use it up on there just so that everyone knows 
And if you've opened up a dip or if you've opened up, you know, a packet of something or you've got a leftover, I don't know, cottage pie from the night before and it's cooled down and you've put it in the Tupperware, it can go in that box, okay? And then that way you know you can use it up within the next day or two, okay? It's like urgent, urgent, let's use this box up. And then a couple of times, so every Wednesday and on a Sunday, now I know this is sounds pretty full on, but this is who I am. I go through my fridge and I just kind of look through expiry dates and I'll tell you why. It's because I hate food waste and I hate wasting money. They're the two things I despise. So for me, I want to make use of everything. You know, I'm not a massive food shop fan. I do all my food shop online. So I do kind of buy what I need. But at Christmas time, I feel like it does get full and it does get, you know, a little bit overwhelming the fridge. Um, hence, that's why earlier in December, I am planning food and what we're going to have pretty much that our fridge, you know, bear, you know, I guess bear that there's a few little essentials that do creep in um that you know just it is what it is but I am quite regimented with that and I feel like that helps prevent us wasting what's inside the fridge so structure I love using um glass tupper like not tupperware but glass food containers with lids so they're stackable um again I have other containers in there for cheese and for like sliced meats um I have two like draw systems at the top for like all the sauces because I don't know about you they can quickly take over a fridge if they're not contained you know they really you open, can they really can yes. so I feel like putting them in a container sauces and pickles and jars of things and they make us use it up my husband was really surprised once I put those in containers a couple of years ago he was like I was always looking for mango chutney and would end up having four mango chutneys in the fridge. <laughs> and that was because that was because there wasn't a system in place. And then obviously the fridge container went in there. And then now we know what we've got to use up. Um, and it just makes it so much easier. And you can pull the whole container out, can't you? So you can just pull the whole yeah. container out. You can see what's at the back. You can see your four mango, ch- mango chutneys there. So you know you don't have to go and open up a new one. And it just, it, it really helps, doesn't it? And it helps with shopping too. You know, when you're looking through and you go, oh, look, you know, nearly run out of tomato ketchup or, you know, we need these or we've got hardly any cheeses. I mean, the, I've got teenagers. They tell me all the time that there's nothing in the fridge all the time. It's like, there's no food in the fridge. <laughs> I'm like, well, you're, you're only eating Pringles and pot noodles. So what's the point? No, I'm joking. But, um, <laughs> but that is, that is a really good, a teenager will tell you when you need to put stuff in your fridge, but it, it really does help you see what, what, what's in there basically. Yeah. I tell you what, um, what's so something that this kind of revolutionised food waste in our home? Um, this isn't really an organisation thing. Well, it is, I guess. But um, when we started doing those sort of meal um meal kits from like Hello Fresh or Gusto, Ooh. it really massively helped. Now they're quite expensive, right? So the and and this isn't an ad by any stretch of the imagination. But the one that we have recently discovered and love is called Simply Cook, and it's like. £10 for four kits of basically you get like the spices and the flavorings and then when you're doing your food shop you you, you know to order like four chicken thighs you know some rice or whatever a pepper and so you're just literally ordering you know what you need mm. and it just I don't know it's it's not mega expensive it's not breaking the bank but it's just kind of streamlining our shopping experience I love that it's so good honestly there's a part of me that is kind of would love a bit of a futuristic fridge where you would just open it up your fridge and just pick out Monday's food Tuesday's food do you know what I mean yes Oh, oh, wouldn't that be good yes. I'd love that and I just think that would make so much sense it makes so much sense to me to have that and also, mm. so annoying that fridges have different temperatures, by the way, um, you know, from the top to the bottom and everything else. That's so yes. annoying. Please make a fridge that is just 
one temperature so we can all, you know, just relax a bit. But yeah, obviously it's so important to store food, you know, in the right levels when we can remember, when we're not stuffing in, as I say, the stuffing at the top shelf next to trifle <laughs> i think that's something that i need to look up on because i i don't pay any attention to the different temperatures in the fridge and there might be people, other people listening who are thinking the same like panicking googling it thinking oh my yeah. goodness am i storing all my food on the wrong shelves um so yes that's something for me to go and look into i call controversy by storing eggs in my fridge but i i just think it makes sense to me you know i know some people don't there is no rule i looked it up yeah. You can store them in either or, okay? So before anyone starts sending me hate mail. I think I think in the UK we tend to not keep them in the fridge, but I think in the States and I think other countries they do. The only time that um so we don't keep our fridge our eggs in the fridge, but the only time that I think we have come a cropper mm. is that if you get a really big heat wave and your eggs are just sitting on the on mm. the counter, um it it can be a bit dodgy like i think my twins a couple of summers ago got food poisoning because the eggs that they'd had for dinner had been sat in like 38 degree heat it's like inside bacteria can grow inside eggs uh, mm. yeah depending on the temperature so i would agree with you there it was a summer thing and that probably was why and but as soon as i hear the word bacteria and it's not because i'm super clean or anything but i just think i don't want that I actually don't want that. That's why I'm quite hot on as soon as I open a jar and it says use within 10 days, I do my best and I put it up there because at the end of the day, I don't really want to be eating something that's off, you know? No, no. <laughs> I mean, I mean, this really is a controversial topic because you do get a lot of people who, who are like, oh, you know, use by dates. They're just put there to, to cover, you know, the the backsides of the food companies and I'll eat something that's five days out of date and I'm fine. So it is it is quite controversial, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I know it is. And it is really down to personal preference. And I know that. Um, it's, it goes on to like the herbs as well. You know, when you look at the herb dates, it's always funny when I work with clients and they're like, oh, this one was from 2015. And the thing is, it's yeah. going to be fine. <laughs> it's going to be fine. But there's not going to be much flavour. Yeah, yeah, that's me. That's me. Um, I've got, you know, thinking about your, um, you know, your three jars of, of mango chutney, I think I've probably got about four boxes of cumin because there have definitely <laughs> been different times where I'm like, I'm going to make a curry today. I'm going to buy some cumin. And I've actually got already got like three opened boxes of cumin from 2012 yeah. in my cupboard. Hilarious. It is funny though, isn't it? But then when you think about it, <laughs> You know, when you look inside our kitchens and sometimes they don't need to be as complicated as they are. I mean, I think we all love to fill a kitchen. You know, it's one of our favourite things. And then all of a sudden there's no room at the inn. There is no room. There is nothing we've got like, but we're still acquiring. We're still acquiring. So then we're putting it on our worktops and then, oh, we've got no room there. Let's put it on the top of the um, the kitchen and we'll use that every now and then. We'll put that up there. You won't because you'll get dust on it and you'll get all various bits and pieces and you'll be like, oh, look what's up there in a year's time. So I just think it's really important. I do an edit every quarter and I just go through all the sections. So I will be doing something very exciting soon in February. Um, but you know, there is, it's a great time to actually go through and just see what you've got and what you're using and am I keeping that just because that made someone else happy um yeah I think it's a it's a really important thing just to give space you know give your favorite items room to shine and move about and just be like yes pick me use me because that's why they're in there. It's always that for us, it's things like we've got a corner cupboard in our kitchen, which is like really tricky to get into. And that's where stuff gets kind of dumped. So it's like the bread maker is in there. The George Foreman grill that we that we used to love, but never use is in there. You know, like all these kind of like gadgets and things that were, you know, we were really excited. The popcorn maker is in there. And, you know, we haven't used them for donkey's years. You've just named them all. So that's brilliant that you know what's in your corner <laughs> cupboard. Most people 
people don't. <laughs> Most people don't. Um, what I would say with the corner cupboard, um, a really good tip here is I do, I organize it in seasonal order. So right in the corner at the moment is all my summer stuff. So it's all ah. the things to do with, you know, like barbecues, summer bowls, um, the picnic bits and pieces. It's a great place because you're not going to be going into that corner really searching for things or like you Alison if you've got big bulky you know items um like the George Foreman or the popcorn maker or whatever they can go in that corner because it makes sense that even though they're big and bulky but you can still see them um and then like at the front of my corner cabinet I've got all my winter bits so it'd be like the slow cooker um the sandwich toasted maker um I'm just trying to think what's in there at the front at the top oh and all my Tupperware is at the front of mine um in a box well Tupperware this 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 was my next question Nicola the Tupperware cupboard how do we keep that organized because I open it and it all just comes tumbling out and it takes me 20 minutes to find the flipping lids I know so have you seen that video where that woman opens up the the cupboard doors and like a mountain of Tupperware comes flying out. I don't think I have, but I, but I know how she feels. Yeah, it's hilarious, but it's so real. Um, I just think it is so annoying, food containers. I'm not a huge fan, if I'm honest with you. I've got the ones, like the glass ones that I use in the fridge. Um, and when they're empty, I wash them and I actually put them back in the fridge because I just think it's easier because I will be using them all the time. So they don't actually go in a cupboard, but my husband does love to use them and he, ta- he likes taking a lot of food into work. Um, so what I, there's a couple of really good systems here that you can do. The first one is to just put the lid on and I sort of file them so you can have them in like a big box and you can just have them literally in a row. Okay. I have about eight containers so that works now I know a lot of people have more than that especially when you've got little kids and when we had little I have kids 80. I have about 80 <laughs> so if you've got 80 <laughs> what you need to do is um this is a really good tip actually is labeling or getting a sharpie um and writing number one on the lid and writing number one on the base of whatever that item is oh i love it and that will help you anyone who's unloading the dishwasher or the washing up i mean if you've got 80 i would probably say you need to definitely condense them (laughs) down but um i do know that when you've got little ones it's the snacks isn't it it's a snack box Mm. and but really, it's like mugs. You know, you don't need all of these containers. Really, you don't. You're never going to use all of them. So just be realistic. And I know that you're probably thinking, oh, you know, it's plastic. I don't want to throw it. You can reuse some of the larger containers. I like using them um, inside drawers as drawer organizers. So yeah, that they, they, you can just put loads of things, maybe in your utensils drawer, you know, put a couple of old <laughs> tomato stained, um, containers in there. And then you could put all like your little baking bits in there or store some of your spices in them. We've done that actually. We've done, yeah, we've done exactly that. We've got a little Tupperware box with all of the like toddler cutlery for, for my little girls. Perfect. Um, and it's actually, it's the perfect size for it as well. And I bet that makes a difference when you're putting things away because you know where to put them and then Mm. obviously when you need to find something you know where to go and that is basically the whole benefits of creating a home for something so yeah with the Tupperware they're my two suggestions (laughs) or some people like to store lids um next to the containers of food containers so that's another alternative and another really great system for that is that you can get like shelf organizers that you can clip onto the shelf above so you could put all the lids in that shelf organizer and then have all the pots underneath but i do think numbering them is a good suggestion I think numbering them sounds it sounds a bit easier, yeah, a bit more straightforward. Um, Nicola, it has been so wonderful to talk to you today. I feel like I am inspired to just 
get going on this, you know, in the new year to just be organised and declutter and sort Good. myself out. So thank you so much. Pleasure. Um, please tell us where we can find you online for more organisation tips and where we can get your book. Okay, so obviously on Instagram and Facebook, Twitter, it's This Girl Can Organise. And my book is called Mind Over Clutter, which I believe you can still get in Waterstones, WH Smith and at Amazon. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Happy New Year.